Hey guys, and welcome to Siege Castles. If you love the old Flash games where you build your own castle and then hurl rocks at your enemies' castles, then you'll probably love Siege Castles. Anyway, I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks on how to get ahead in Siege Castles. The first one would of course be choosing what building to upgrade. So when you're upgrading your buildings, you can choose to either upgrade the town, the farm, the silo, and you could also build the forge. The town will earn you gold, the farm will earn you bread, and the silo will increase the capacity of your bread. The forge will unlock the merging power, so you can merge two rooms or two weapons into a higher tier weapon or room. So of course, the first thing you should buy is definitely the forge. The next thing you should focus on upgrading is the town. You want to get your town to tier 3 as fast as possible. You can choose not to upgrade your farm and silo for now. The reason why you want to do this is because your town not only generates gold, it will give you more workers. So at tier 1, you'll have 2 workers. At tier 2, you'll have 4 workers. And at tier 3, you can see I have 7 workers. What workers do is that it allows you to generate resources much much faster so for example i want to get 177 gold using one worker it would take me 38 hours but if i have five workers working on it it'll only take me seven hours you can have up to five workers working on one task at a time this is why i highly recommend you max out or at least get to tier three town before you do anything else because it will also give you extra workers to speed up the process of generating resources moving on we have a few exploits not exploits we have a few tricks when building your castle so this first one is hiding your trebuchets under a line of walls so how this works is that your trebuchet will launch its projectile half a block above it which means it will be launching in this middle section and because the projectile's already in the block it will be able to fly outside without hitting the block i'll go ahead and show it to you inside a battle the projectiles of my trebuchet just goes right through my blocks. It doesn't affect, it doesn't hurt my own blocks in any way. Now the reason why this is actually good is that the enemy projectiles would have to eat through my blocks before they could actually hurt my trebuchet. So this adds like another layer of defense other than just the, just the shield rooms the arcane shield rooms and there you have it we won nice the next trick is that your cannons can actually shoot through the siege weapon in front of it so if i put a wall here my cannon will shoot the wall and then of course that cannon would be basically useless but if i put another siege weapon in front of it and get rid of the wall my cannon will actually shoot through the siege weapon into the enemy lines. So let's go ahead and test that out in battle. Oh, so as you can see, the cannonball went straight through my catapult. It didn't hit the catapult. It didn't harm the catapult. It just went straight through. Oh, whoops. Yeah, that is not the best position for the cannon. Um, usually you want to position your cannon a little bit lower. Uh-oh. That is a problem. Ooh. So this next one is about the rooms. So if you ever come across the Omega Mage, I highly, highly, highly discourage you from taking or using that room because it's more of like it summons a black hole in the middle of the battlefield and it's more of a hit or miss strategy it's more often than not completely useless okay the omega mage this time actually summoned the black hole on top of the enemy which is pretty good because this means that all the projectiles will drop down on the enemy
It doesn't seem like we'll be winning this one though, unfortunately. Yep, and it sends the cannonballs right back at us. We got a crap ton of soldiers um, charging, but that's not doing anything. Yep, unfortunately it's a defeat, so yeah, the Omega Mage hit or miss. Um, use it if you like, but I highly discourage you from getting it. Another thing about rooms is that you want to have as much of the Arcane Shield 1 room as possible. While it may seem like the Arcane Shield 3, which has the best stats, would be better, um, it simply takes too much power. So the Arcane Shield 1 only takes 60 power, while the Arcane Shield 3 takes 290 power, which means you can have almost 5 Arcane Shield 1s rather than a singular Arcane Shield 3. Of course, if you can't afford it, here's a setup that I highly recommend. It's a diagonal setup with Arcane Shield 1s on the first layer, Arcane Shield 2 and 3s on the second layer. This will allow your shields to overlap and hopefully by the time the second volley of enemy fire comes to your base, your shields would have regenerated. So what this layering technique allows us to do is that it gives us more time to recharge. So as you can see, currently my Arcane Shields 3 and 2 are active. And once those are recharging, my Arcane Shields 1 will be the ones to activate. Which will allow us more time to hopefully finish the cooldown before the enemies launch their second volley of fire. Alright, there we go. That's one victory in the bag. Another building strategy that's apparently very viable is that you can build upwards. Building upwards is apparently a very good strategy. So you just build as high as possible. Uh, let me get rid of all these shields. And then you build your front here with something du more durable. Okay, now that we have this like huge structure, what we need to do is simply chuck down as many catapults as we can. And voila, we're done. This is actually the build. Um, throw down a bunch of arcane shields because that's always good. And then throw down arcane shield tree here in the middle. Uh, maybe put some warriors. And yeah, I think that's all we can do. So the advantages of this build is that you're, you have the high ground and the high ground is very important somehow. Um, yeah, the way I see it, I, I don't understand how the high ground it makes you any stronger. You're just as exposed. But maybe because of the physics, the enemies would have to lob their um, their projectiles upwards while you just have to lob it laterally, which kind of allows you an advantage somehow. Anyway, that's it for showcasing uh, Siege Castles, and till next time.